welcome to Learning Mole. Today we're thinking about addition for kids, thinking about those different steps that your child might go through in order to be able to apply those addition skills to different situations later on in your mathematical journey. And we're going to look at story problems. Now story problems are all about applying those skills. So these will be introduced after your child actually does understand the concept of addition and will be able to then put it into practice. And we really want to use those real life contexts I would say if you can um, get problems or stories that your child is interested in, so if they're interested in Pokemon, use Pokemon. If they're interested in My Little Pony, use My Little Pony, because children will enjoy it more if they're actually dealing with subjects that they're interested in. So a very simple basic addition problem. Um, Mark has 13 cards, he buys seven more. How many cards does he have all together? Now I am a firm believer in this rucksack model. Um, I've used it a lot. Um, initially I saw it in Twinkle. I don't know um, if they were the ones to create it um, initially, but it is a really, really good model. And I talk about to the children about getting on their problem solving rucksack. And this actually gives them steps that they can tick off and a process to go through. So they're not just stabbing blindly at solving a problem. So you've got your rucksack, which is read, understand, choose, solve, answer, and check. And I will talk through each one of those steps as we go through solving this problem. And it can be used from the simplest problems to the more complex ones. And I would actually be inclined to really get the children into this routine using these um, steps so that they can apply it to every situation. And as the challenges get more difficult, the children will have a process and something that they can actually go back to and tick off um, and know that they have completed all steps. So my first um, section in Rucksack is to read. So I'm going to read the problem. Mark has 13 cards. He buys seven more. How many cards does he have all together? My U means understand. So that's where I'm pulling out my key information. I'm going through my problem. I want need to know what is important to me um, so that I can actually understand what I am doing. So I actually, at this stage, encourage children to get a different color pen, a highlighter, whatever they want, and to highlight the key points. This is a big discussion point because children will sometimes highlight things that are not important. And it's really, really important that you talk through what is important, how they know it's important, and all that use of mathematical language, which is going to give them the clues so they can understand what they're doing. So I'm going to know that 13 is important. The fact that it's cards, not important. It could be dogs, it could be sweets, it could be bananas, not important. He buys seven more. So again, that's important. And I'm actually going to ring buy as well, because buy sometimes can have an effect on what we're doing in our problem. How many cards does he have all together? Again, I'm going to ring the all together and the how many, because this is telling me immediately all together. I know generally all together is a word that is usually related to multiplication or addition. So already I'm starting to get some clues and I've also highlighted my key numbers in there as well. So I'm starting to understand what I need to do. Choose is now to choose your operation, choose the calculation, choose what you're actually going to do to solve this. So I'm looking back, I'm thinking all together is probably telling me to add in this scenario. Um, and I've got my numbers 13 and seven. Doesn't really matter um, what way I do my calculation. I would also say actually more is very important there um, because you want to show that that is adding the numbers getting bigger. So I'm going to write my calculation down. So I'm going to say 13, he has 13. He actually goes into the shop, he buys seven more. So I've now chosen my operation. My next step is to solve. So I want to solve this. So I'm using my known facts, I'm using my number line, I'm using my number square, whatever is suitable for your child and in a way that they find comfortable. So I might already um, use my known facts and I might already at least say straight away, well, I know that three and seven is 10 and I've got another 10 here. So it's going to be 10 plus 10, which is equal to 20. Another child might want to use a number line. So they will draw their number line. They will put 13 at the beginning because they're going to draw a blank number line and they're going to do their seven jumps. They're going to do 13, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then count on 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 
So do encourage your child to use whatever tools they feel is necessary in the beginning stages of solving story problems. Another way, an alternative way of exploring story problems and one which I love because it gives the children a wee bit of ownership and allows them to really think about the language that's being used in story problems and it really gives them a chance to think about the relevant detail is to actually give your child a number and allow them to make up the story problem. So I might say your number is seven and that is then the challenge to turn it on its head and your child has to go and think of a story problem. So they might go away. Um, this can also be done visually if your child is not at the stage where they can write. They can draw pictures, it's no problem at all. So I might have a child that says, right, well, um, I have three sweets. So I draw my three little sweeties. Excuse my drawing, I'm definitely not an artist. Um, so my three sweets, and it's absolutely fine to allow your child to do visual representation as well. It really is what your child is comfortable with and it allows them to understand because that's the key of story problems. It's their understanding and being able to apply. And then they might say, my, I've got three sweets and my granny takes me to the shop and she buys me four more sweets. So here's my four more sweets. How many sweets do I have all together? And it can be as simple as that or as complicated um, as they like. It's also a good way of actually allowing children to make up story problems for other children. Although I would say that it is important that they are able to solve it themselves and that they have the answer written down in their book or their whiteboard before they actually challenge somebody else. So it has to be something that they can do so that obviously other children can solve it but do have fun with story problems, make them relevant, make them fun, and actually really do allow children to focus on these different steps and allow them to have a method and a process um, to help them solve them.